first of all, uh, I'm really, really grateful that I've got this opportunity because I don't come from the field of forensic psychology or uh, forensic science. I come from organizational psychology and I'm pursuing my PhD in that. So uh, I've just given it a try and I'm, I got a lot of information from today's session. So just given it my best that I could. So with your permission, can I please start with my presentation? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> Okay, so I have just studied the different gender differences in, in, in instances of uh, online abuse and perceived social security. So if we talk about today's era, or, see, internet is so omnipresent, there are new apps being launched every day, there are new things being launched every, every day, new day, new apps, new trends, some Instagram trends, TikTok trends, and that's being, uh, that's, and people are not feeling secured uh, regarding their uh, information that's being shared online let it be their back down, so let it be their all the informative information. So when I was reading the researches, I came to know about the statistics and I just uh, read about them. So that says in India, the total uh, percentage of uh, men who use internet a lot are 71% and the women uh, who contribute to it are uh, somewhere around 29%. Fine, but there are uh, new terms like trolling is now a uh, new in trend, which is kind of an online abuse for some people, even uh, the sense of humor that people use online. So uh, I read, wait right now. So I were, okay. So I uh, read some literature and I've just noted two of them down. One, when, uh, I was reading one research of Sena Gupta and Chaudhary that we did in 2011, which understood that uh, how social media has increased the cyber abuse and how these social media sites uh, don't have those strict regulations by far now or the uh, related to cyber abuse. So there's a lot of people who are facing these uh, increase in cyber abuse. And the second which was conducted in 2016 by Jane Yon. He concluded that women were more prone on to being addicted to their smartphones than men. And it was further noted that men were likely to check their phones only during breaks and like the call or text. But when we talk about women, on the other hand, they were, they were more prone to it. And uh, they were they were the more vulnerable section of the society as compared to the male dominant. Okay, so the objectives of the research were to identify whether there is a gender difference in uh, cyber abuse faced by men and women, to identify whether the type of abuse differs between men and women, to understand what acts as a trigger to cyber abuse and how secure both men and women feel uh, when they use the cyber web. So the sampling that I did was I because of the time constraint and uh, me trying to like put in a lot of uh, effort in understanding the complete scenarios. So we could just collect the data from 50 people. And uh, it was made sure that I get the data from both male and female. And the research tool that was, it was made an online questionnaire. It was a customized questionnaire. I took questions from uh, a different questionnaires uh, from, from the same field. So there were total 17 questions out of which two were the, uh, sorry, there were total, <laughs> it was an online questionnaire which consisted of 17 questions, a closed ended question, two were open ended questions. And a proper Google form was made, and uh, the link was sent uh, through uh, email and through WhatsApp. So the 17 questions that were the closed ended questions, they were mandatory, and the two open ended questions were not that mandatory. But most of the people did report respond to that. The first 15 questions were all related to the incident of cyber abuse, which ranged from questions regarding the nature, the type medium triggers, duration, direction, remedy taken by the victim. And the following three questions were regarding the security in cyber world and had to be rated on the scale of one to 10, that where one being uh, not very secure and 10 being completely secure. Like, for example, like how secure the people while to share their pictures online or uh, whenever they're taking some information online. The last question that were the open-ended questions of, uh, of personalities from the field industry of journalism, entertainment, publishing, comedy, political, politics, men and female both counterparts were taken and uh, also what kind of threats they get, uh, they were also asked to write about that and they were told that how extremely they were affected by it, what was the severity of the uh, complete scenario and then all the responses were collected anonymously. Then the analysis, analysis I did, I used uh, SPSS where the total respondents that I've shown, the total uh, sample 70%, 42 were females and 18 were males who had faced some form of cyber abuse. And as I've written it on the graph, there were uh, the most 
things that were faced by the people around the threat of violence, cyber stalking, harassment, name calling or offensive language and more than one that is combination of two or more things came up. So as it is evident from the above graph, harassment was the most common form of cyber incident that the victims had faced. Nearly 40% of both male and female users face some form of harassment and also rated the strong of abuse as less severe. Their reaction to this form of abuse consists of majority reporting the account of blocking by, or uh, blocking the user for which the remedy adopted by the 50% of the victim. So mostly people who got over into the uh, cyber harassment or in the cyber crime, what they did, whatever threat they were getting from the person, they preferred blocking them online rather than reporting it out. So blocking of the uh, accounts, that was the most remedy which was uh, picked up by 50% of the victims. And uh, now I'll just conclude it. A chi score analysis was done in order to access the relationship between uh, gender and nature of the abusers. Well, uh, that 45%, that 19, about 42 female respondents received abuses of sexual in nature. And uh, uh, we talk about men, then it was mere 16% who re received abuses of uh, sexual nature. The above analysis suggests that women on cybercrime were are more likely than men to receive abuse of sexual in nature. On analyzing the different uh, triggers of cyber abuse, it was seen that 40% of the abuse were directed towards personal photo photographs and videos that were being shared by uh, people online on their files. And it was seen that 40% of the abuse was directed towards personal photography videos. 35% were a result of voicing one's opinion. For example, there are these uh, feeds where people like put in their opinions and so there were 35% of the results which reflected that uh, they were being threatened on the opinions that they are, that they are raising and 13% were uh, of other reasons. A majority of abuse was seen personal in nature. To summarize, it was found that women were more likely to receive some form of cyber abuse when compared to men. Furthermore, it was seen that women were also more likely to receive abuse of sexual in nature as compared to men. Men mostly uh, received uh, threats, threats uh, as compared to sexual uh, abusers. Harassment was one of the most common form of issues uh, faced and it was rated as less severe. Majority of the respondents rated personal photography videos as most common trigger of abuse. It can be inferred that the most form of harassment that female users faced were non-violent yet sexual in nature. So it was more uh, things were more sexual in nature or the harassments were more sexual in nature. That's it. That was uh, 